Hello everyone, I'm Theo Hartzell. In today's video, I want to help you learn how to identify and recognize a thought you're having or a voice that you're hearing, whether it is God, you, or the devil. Now this is critical and important because you need to immediately make up your mind and decide whether you are hearing God, whether it's just your mind having its own thoughts, or whether it's the devil. Because I have seen from experience myself that sometimes you will hear a voice or a thought. If you don't rightly discern whether it's God or not, you can end up feeling like you're in rebellion against God. You can end up feeling confused, uncertain, upset in your relationship to God because like, well, was it God or was it not God? Did I disobey the Lord? Is God mad at me? Did this problem happen because that was actually God talking and I didn't know it was God? I want to help you learn how to just stop all of that confusion and worry and fear and wrestling with all the thoughts of condemnation and guilt and shame. Like, was it God? Was it not God? Did I disobey God? Did I hurt his feelings? I want to help you. And I'm going to just simply look at a scripture passage in the Bible that's going to show us some godly attributes and some demonic attributes. We're going to look at those to discern how to tell that feeling impression or the thing that's coming against you. Is it God? Is it me? Is it the devil? With that being said, let's just jump into a scripture passage at James chapter 3, starting at verse 13. It says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Verse 17, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good works, without partiality and without hypocrisy, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Okay, what we're going to do is we're now going to break these scriptures down and we're going to go through them. Because James here is identifying, look, here are some fleshly and demonic things and what happens with them and the feelings, the emotions associated with these things. And then there are some godly things and what is associated with them. Now, I'm going to break these down and we'll go into the definitions and what they mean. And this is going to help you. How is it going to help you? The way it's going to help you is when you're in church and you have a strong impression or a feeling or a voice that comes to you, whether it's about somebody in the church, whether it's somebody on the job, whether it's some something you should do. For example, should you move here? Should you buy this? Should you go do this thing? Should you go pray for that person? Are you receiving a word of knowledge? Are you receiving an instruction from God? Whatever the thought is, whatever the strong impression is, whatever the voices are, you are going to discern them and fleece them, if you will, or filter them. Let me say it that way. You're going to filter them against what I am about to show you in these definitions, because I've been through this a lot in my own life for years. And I'm telling you, if you will judge the word, judge the thought, judge the voice, the impression with what I'm about to show you, you will have a very strong conviction of whether it's God, whether it's you, or whether it's the devil. So let's go back into verse 14, and it says, But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. So now let's define what each one of these words mean so that we can discern the feeling that will be associated with them. For example, the word bitter, when it says, if ye have bitter 
envying. The word bitter there in the Greek means bitter, condemning, harsh, cruel. Now let me jump in here just to show you how we're already going to apply this to hearing and discerning God with conviction so that we're at peace with the response that we have to the voice or the impression that we have received. Did I receive a word of knowledge from the Lord? Is this word for somebody? Do I need to go pray for them? I, I see something bad about this person over here. Is it from God or is it from me or is it from the devil? I'm picking up something about this person, okay? We want to learn how to accurately discern and filter whether it's from God, us, or the devil. So just for an example, the word bitter with its definitions and meanings. When you have a thought or an impression or a feeling about someone or something, does any of these definitions of the word bitter apply in the impression, the thoughts, or the voice that you have? More than likely, if it's the case, then it's not of God. And I want you to understand and know then you can discern and judge it at that moment, whether it is of God, whether it's of your flesh and should be ignored, or whether it's from Satan and should be totally ignored. Is the thought bitter? Is the thought condemning? Is the voice or the impression that you're having harsh? Is it cruel? And if it is any one of those things, then more than likely, like 99.9%, .9 you can just mark it off right now that it is either your flesh, your fallen human nature that's subject to its own problems and your own mind, or it's either the devil. It's not God because it's cruel, it's harsh, it's condemning, it's bitter, angry. We'll go through all these things. All right, now let's go on to the next one and we'll move through these pretty quickly. The next one is envy and it means jealousy, rivalry, or envious. And we'll go through these pretty quickly. But the point I want to make is that thought or that impression, that voice that you're hearing, does it have a ring or a feel or an impression of jealousy? of rivalry, somebody you're mad about because you don't think you measure up to them? Does it make you feel envious of them? You wish you had what they had, and so you want to like attack them and hurt them and cause them pain? That's not a God. The next word is strife. Now this word strife means fractitious, dividing spirit, quarrel, argumentative, and self-interest. Is this thought that you're having in this voice that you're hearing, is it leading you to start an argument? Is it going to lead you into a quarrel? Is it about you promoting you? Is it about your self-interest? Is it about you being selfish? Is it about all about you? If that thought or that voice is leading you into an argumentative, quarrelsome environment, then more than likely that voice is not of God and you can immediately remove it out of your life and move on with your life and make a judgment call that it's over and done. The next word is earthly. Now this means worldly or from the earth. In other words, is this voice or thought based in the earth system? In other words, God is not the primary driver. It is about you. It is about your flesh. It is about something earthly. It is about something in the earth system that has nothing to do with God. And you're not even seeking God's counsel, God's wisdom, or God's direction in the matter. If the thought that you're having right now is a earth-based system thought without God in it, then please filter it with the Holy Ghost and check it because more than likely it's of your flesh or it's of the devil. The next one is the word sensual. In the Greek, it means soulish or carnal. Now, if you know the word for soul, you understand soulish means the mind, the will, and the emotions. In other words, it's in the mind realm. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because is the thought or the impression that you're having, is it sensual? Is it based in the lust of the flesh? Is it based in the lust of the mind, the pride of life? Is it based in your emotions? Is it a carnal, fleshly, lustful thought? If it is, it is not of God. It is your flesh or it is demonic. It is the wrong influence. So please, when you have an impression, is it something sensual? Is it based in your mind? Is it based in your emotions? The next word is devilish, and in the Greek it means demonic, devilish, or wicked. Now let me jump in here just for a moment and expound on this for a bit about this devilish, demonic influence, because you may not always just 
feel a super strong demonic impression and you've got to discern it in your spirit. For example, the apostle Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4 that there would become those later teaching doctrines of devils. And what would they be teaching? They would be teaching to abstain from meat. And then they would be saying that you must abstain from marriage and forbidding people to get married. And those are doctrines of devils, according to the Apostle Paul. What am I trying to say? It may not just be a thought or an impression or a feeling that you're having. It may be somebody's point of view about Scripture and their takeaway on the Scripture. And it's up to you to discern whether, is this of God? Is this not? And I'll be honest with you, one way that I've had this happen to me, for example, and I'm just giving you an example, is there's been times where I've gone to the refrigerator to get something to eat, and I hear a voice, or have a strong impression, but it feels like a voice, don't eat that. Now, as soon as, listen, this is important, as soon as the voice came and said, don't eat that, I began to physically shake in my body. I immediately got irritated and agitated and upset. There's even been times and cases where I've started like dropping things. I became disoriented, discoordinated, maybe, and just all kinds of things going on physically. And over the years, I've learned to recognize, hold on, wait, wait, hold on. There was not any peace associated with that. There was not any joy associated with that. It was, in fact, the opposite. As soon as I heard that voice or had that thought, I immediately came under physiological and emotional attack. You know what that tells me? That was not God. That really was not even my flesh, because if you have your own thoughts, your own thoughts are neutral oftentimes. What it was was a demonic voice trying to bring me under its control. And the way that I recognized it is, wait, hold on. What was the feeling or the impression associated with it? It was demonic. I started shaking. I started, my body literally started shaking. I got irritated. I got agitated. I got upset. My mind started getting confused, all kinds of things. And it was a demon spirit trying to give me that thought. And that goes along with the next thing I want to show you, which is the word confusion that James used. This word confusion means confusion, instability, state of disorder, noise, tumult, disturbance. Did you see that? That is exactly what I'm talking to you about and trying to tell you. If you have a thought or a voice or an impression or a feeling, that immediately disorients you and confuses you and causes even a physiological reaction where you're shaking, get weak, get disoriented, feel like fainting, all kinds of things, anything like that. It is not of God. And I want you to immediately judge that voice and say, that was not of God. And I'm making the call right now. That was not God. I'm ignoring it. I'm stopping that any, I'm not going down this road with this voice anymore. And in fact, I'm going to stop and I'm going to praise the Lord right now because that was a fiery dart of the enemy. I'm going to take control of my mind. I'm going to take control of my thoughts. I am not allowing confusion in my mind right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, God. I've got a sound mind. You've not given me the spirit of fear nor of torment. None of that. You've given me the spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and you take authority over it, and you challenge it, and you rebuke that feeling because it was not God, and it was not your flesh. It was actually Satan, a demon, something else in the demonic realm, and you need to reject it. And part of the reason that I'm saying this is once you make that judgment call that that was not God, I want you to go on with the full assurance that that was not God. I don't have to obey it. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to question it because I'm making the judgment call that it's not God. The next one, evil work. And in the Greek, that means actions that are evil, wicked, foul, corrupt, or worthless. In other words, what is the end result of this voice, this thought, or this impression if I carry it out? Is it going to lead to things that are evil and wicked? 
Is it going to lead to things that are worthless and don't even matter? What is the end result? In other words, think for a minute. Okay, if I carry this out, is there any good going to come out of this for God? Don't entertain it. Make the judgment call. It's not God. I'm moving on. And another thing that I can tell you is learning how to recognize whether the thought, impression, or feeling you're having is from Satan is pay attention to how he talked to people in the Bible. For example, there's a major dialogue with him and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Then he also talked to Jesus in the wilderness trying to tempt him. And then look at how he talked to God about Job. For example, about Eve, he talked to her and everything that he talked to Eve about in the garden was making her feel inadequate, insecure, not sufficient, not good enough. She wasn't wise enough. She wasn't smart enough, didn't have enough wisdom, didn't have enough knowledge. Everything was inadequacy, condemning, griping, complaining. You're not good enough. So if you're having thoughts and voices and feelings and impressions that's telling you that you're not good enough, you don't measure up, you're not smart enough, then guess where that's probably coming from? It's not God telling you that you're not good and that you're inadequate. It's the enemy. When he is sitting there talking to Jesus in the wilderness, trying to tempt him, you know what he tempted him with? He tempted him with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The same thing that will happen to everybody. The point is that is the thought or the voice or the impression you're having appealing to the lust of your flesh. It's going to gratify your flesh. It is an appealing to the lust of the eyes. In other words, your mind. And oh man, that would make, if I got all that money, that would make me rich. I'd be so happy and so blessed. Or is it appealing to the pride of life and wanting to make you more arrogant and make you look bigger in the eyes of all the people? In the life of Job, when Satan is talking to God about Job, go look at that. And look at how Satan is talking about Job. Oh, the only reason he loves you is because you've blessed him. The only reason he even loves you and cares about you is because you've put a hedge about him. The only reason he serves you and lives for you is because you've given him things and this and that. What is it? It's condemning. It is scornful. It is casting blame. It is a false witness. It is deceitful. It's all a lie. It's condemning. I can't get past that. If you will look at how Satan talked to God about Job and you can think, okay, wait, is the thought that I'm having a thought that sounds just like that? Is the voice I'm hearing for somebody to go pray for them? Is it a condemning word, an accusation, a false accusation? If it is, brothers and sisters, it's probably not a God. It's more than likely from Satan himself. Go pay attention to those. I'm getting off track, but I just wanted to show you. Go look at those dialogues and conversations about Eve, Jesus in the wilderness, and then Satan talking to God about Job and get the feeling and the impression of those voices and dialogues and conversations, and you'll be able to filter that and use that. Okay, wait, this is the wrong voice. This is a condemning accusation voice. This is not from God. God would want to heal and correct and bless that person, not run them down and falsely accuse them of stuff they didn't even do. Now, let's go to verse 17, and we'll start looking at some good attributes that are going to help us recognize whether it's God, something beneficial. In verse 17, it says, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good works, without partiality and without hypocrisy. The first word, pure, in the Greek means innocent, blameless, free of defilement or impurity. Now, the way that I want to tie this into discerning whether it's God, you, or Satan is this. Is the thought or the voice or the impression that you're having, is there a pureness associated with it? I'm telling you from years and years of experience that when God spoke to me, whether it was something that I had to do to correct, to mend, to fix, or whether it was something that was just a word for me, there is always a pureness associated with it. I don't care what the instruction is, but there is something innocent and sweet and pure 
about the voice or the feeling or the impression that I had. There is something pure and sweet about it. There's a tangible manifestation of pureness about it. How does this tie into you? Because if you have a thought or if you hear a voice and there is not a pureness associated with it, a cleanness, a wholeness associated with it, then you can automatically begin to judge it. Wait, this is just my mind. Hold on. There's not a pureness associated with it. This is more than likely just my thought, a random thought, or this is either something demonic depending on where it falls on this scale of good and evil. And this ties into what I'm trying to help you. If you hear a voice, if you have a thought, if you receive an impression that is compelling you to get ahead of God. In other words, it's a driving, oh, I gotta do this right now. I gotta hurry up and get this done. Hold on, be careful. Wait a second. Is there a peace associated with what you heard or what you discerned or what you felt? If there's not peace associated with it, in other words, if you feel irritable, if you feel upset, if all of a sudden you get shaky, weak, confused, got to move right now or else be careful and you need to make a decision. You need to judge right now. Hold on. Is this God's voice or not? Wait a second. I didn't have peace with it. So I'm making the judgment call right now that that was not God. That was either the flesh or Satan. I'm making the judgment call. I'm going to go on and celebrate God right now. God, I thank you that if you talk to me, there's going to be pureness. There's going to be peace with it. And I'm going to feel all right to give this word. I'm going to feel pure and I'm going to feel peace. The next word is gentle. And in the Greek, it means equitable, fair, mild, gentle. In other words, is the thought or the voice gentle, mild, thoughtful, and considerate of the person that you need to talk to or the thing that you need to do? If it is not considerate, if it is not thoughtful, if it is not mild, if it is not gentle, then you need to judge that thought, impression, or feeling. The next phrase, easy to entreat, in the Greek means devoted, compliant, easily persuaded. In other words, is the voice that you're hearing or the thought devoted and obedient to God and God's will? Do you feel compelled to obey and comply with it or do you not feel like you need to go with it? Pay attention to that because it should be a obedient call or an obedient feeling to obey it. The next word, merciful, in the Greek means compassionate, kind, desirous to help. In other words, that feeling or that voice or that thought, is it kind? Does it want to help somebody? Is it going to bless them? Good fruits, in the Greek, means actions that are good, profitable, useful, and excellence. And that's opposed to evil works. This good fruits, when you carry it out and you take it to completion, are the results going to be profitable, useful, and excellent for God and God's will and God's kingdom? The next one, without partiality, in the Greek means just, unbiased, and impartial. In other words, it is just delivering the word without any judgmental things associated with it. You're not giving a better word for someone because of this, and you're not giving the worse one to somebody else because you don't like them. It's without judgment. It's without bias. It is impartial. It's unbiased. It just delivers the word because God loves all of us the same. The next one is no hypocrisy. And in the Greek, this means not acting one way while being something completely different. All right, now what is my takeaway for you out of this video? What I have tried to do is go through here in the Greek and help you understand that when you hear a voice or you have a thought or you receive an impression or something, I want you to immediately discern the voice or the thought or the impression, the feeling. I want you to immediately judge it. Now, this is going to help you. How? How is it going to help you? Because, for example, I have wasted years of my life because I've been in this for a long time now. And I wasted years hearing a voice and not being able to discern where it was coming from, and then being judged and feeling condemned and critical and hateful of my own self because I would think, well, I didn't obey that voice, and that was probably God, and I should have stepped out in faith, and I should have done that, and, and then I began to feel condemned, and then I didn't even want to serve and love God and live for God anymore like I used to because I was judging myself for the reaction 
to the voice or the word or the impression that I had and not even discerning that when I heard it was not even God himself. It was actually Satan. What am I trying to say? If you don't discern the word of God, the voice of God, the voices that you're hearing, you can end up in guilt and shame and condemnation because you didn't obey the voice of your flesh or the voice of Satan, which was actually a good thing, and yet you're feeling condemned and hating yourself because you didn't obey and step out in faith for the voice that you heard. What I believe that you need to do with your life right now is just like some kind of official in a baseball game, a football game, a basketball game, the official has to make the call based on what they saw. Sometimes it might be right, sometimes it might be wrong, but they're doing the best that they can. What I would like you to do is I want you to start using all that I've taught you in this video. And the next time that you hear a voice and you feel like it's God, the next time you have an impression or a feeling or an unction of God, I want you to judge it according to the words that we've learned, the things that we've seen in the Greek. And if you do not have the godly things associated with it, I want you to judge it as your flesh, and I want you to judge it as a voice from the enemy. And you make the call right then and there. In other words, was it pure? Was it peaceful? Was it unbiased? Was it uplifting and encouraging? Is it going to build and help somebody up? Is it going to have a good end result? On and on. And if it does not have that feeling, if it does not have that flavor, it is, if it does not have that savor to it, then you need to judge it, don't act on it, and remove it, and go on celebrating that God's going to talk to you in such a way that is pure, and is peaceful, and is joyful, and is happy, and is good. And the fruits of the Spirit line up with it. Regardless of what it says, it's going to have the flavor of God on it because it's from God. Amen. God bless you. I love and appreciate you. I could go on and on because I love teaching. And I hope you're receiving a blessing from all this. Please begin to judge and discern the voices, thoughts, and impressions you're having. And just know that you can make a judgment call, move it in and out of your life, whichever way it needs to be. Act on it and have a firm conviction that you either obeyed God or you rejected the flesh and you rejected Satan and go on with your life and just have a good, fruitful relationship with God because he loves you and he cares about you. Amen. I want you to know I love and appreciate you. Thank you, everyone. I love you. Thank you for all your prayers for me and my family. We love and appreciate all of y'all. We're praying for y'all too. Until next time, God bless you. I love you. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Until next time, you pray for me. And I'll be praying for you. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.